You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Last week, not last week, hell, Sunday, the Super Bowl, TMZ captured a picture of Jay-Z and Beyonce seated during the national anthem. Some people took offense to that and were upset. Well, during Wendy Williams' Hot Topics discussion on her show, Wendy decided to call them out. Beyonce and Jay-Z were getting um, slammed on social media for not standing up. They were with their girl, uh, their daughter, Ivy, and... <sighs> Thank you, TMZ Sports, for showing us the picture. Everyone was standing, like, this is only a picture. Of course, Khaled's in it. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be? Um, but, but when they were performing, if you all saw the actual perform ends, people were standing up as the bombs burst in air. You know, you put a hand over your heart. I don't know about you, and our country might be in a bad way, but there's no place I'd rather live than America. <laughs> and some of the first songs I learned in my life, even as a little girl, America the Beautiful, Oh Say Can You See, and all that other stuff. Like, my mom and dad, like, like trips would be to come to see the Statue of Liberty and the Empire State Building and in, in Philadelphia, that Liberty Bell and, you know, going to Washington and passing the White House and stuff like that. Like, you know what, Jay-Z and Beyonce and, and Jay, you might be an NFL owner and I get that in respect, but you don't own all the NFL. You own this much. And Beyonce, I love my <laughs> Ivy Park dress. But Jay-Z and Beyonce, you understand all eyes are on you, and you should have stood up. If you don't like our country, then... Jay-Z responded saying that they were sitting because they were really focused on the performance of Demi Lovato, of course, his rock nation. They're over the, uh, the, all of the uh, music performances at the Super Bowl. He also said they were there discussing her performance. He also said he would not make his daughter part of any protest. Here's what I find to be very interesting about Wendy Williams' comments regarding the national anthem. Wendy, where was your commentary about this? the U.S. flag code that uh, we are supposed to stand and face the flag if there is one. Civilians should stand to attention with their right hand over their heart and military personnel in uniform and veterans should salute throughout. That was Donald Trump, the president, sitting here directing, waving the people, all fidgety. Hand over heart? No. Melania, yeah, but not Trump. But here's the other deal, Wendy. Did you watch Super Bowl? And when Demi was singing, were you standing up at home? Or were you like 99% of the people who watched the Super Bowl sitting on your ass? See, here's what I find to be offensive, Wendy. That you would intimate and essentially say that Jay-Z and Beyonce can leave if they don't like it. I recall reading Jackie Robinson's book, I Never Had It Made. And he titled the book, I Never Had It Made, because he said, as long as there's one African-American who is not fully free, I never had it made. And Jackie Robinson explained in the book why he doesn't salute 
the flag and why he doesn't sing the national anthem and why he doesn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. Because he talked about, the, in his book, the pain, the racial hatred of what he had to endure. Now, there are people who say, oh, but that was Jackie, but you didn't have to endure that. But see, every time an African-American is beaten by a cop, there's a U.S. flag is on that uniform. So, the, so should we ignore that? See, we all don't actually have to do those things. We actually have the right to protest if we want to, Wendy. And then for you to say that, oh, these were the first songs you remember singing and you remember going to see the Liberty Bell and going to see the White House. Well, your parents are graduates of HBCUs. I'm sure they taught you when the White House was built by slaves. I'm sure when you went to go see the Liberty Bell, they explained to you that when that bell was rung, it wasn't for us. See, it's real easy, Wendy, to sit in your position and then play this, oh, I'm such an American. When there's some real fundamental issues that people have when it comes to what's happening in this country. It's always amazing to me how many people are so patriotic and they say it's disrespectful to the military and first responders. You know what I say is disrespectful to the military and first responders? When we don't even understand why we even fight. People say that they're fighting for our freedoms. Well, exactly what freedoms are those? I recall that if you talk about the freedoms in the Constitution, there's the First Amendment, which allows for us to actually protest, allows for us to actually assemble. It's first for a reason. It's before the second with the guns. It's before the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixteenth. This before all the additional amendments. It was first for a reason. But see, Wendy, when you play this little game and trying to be, oh, I'm so patriotic, why don't you actually use your platform and tell your audience about American history? Why don't you use your platform, Wendy, during Black History Month to tell your audience about the black men who were lynched in their uniforms? Why don't you tell your audience, Wendy, about the black men who fought in train depots with white men, white soldiers, as they got back from Germany? Individuals who they were so-called so fighting on the same side against racism and bigotry in, against Germany, against the Japanese. Why don't you talk about the hell that black soldiers had to pay, Wendy, in the military? Why don't you talk about during Black History Month how black people have had to love a country that did, did not love them? Why don't you talk about civil servants who work in the federal government, who work for the Treasury Department and the Secret Service and the FBI, and who had to file racial discrimination lawsuits against this very government. Why don't you talk about the hell that black folks endure right now working in public policy? See, I, it's amazing to me how we always want to talk about the national anthem and celebrate the flag, but don't want to say a damn thing when people are using the same system against us. I want to know, Wendy, when will you talk about that in your hot topics? When you will cover any of that in your discussions? When will you talk about the racial inequity and when it comes to income in this country? If we want to talk about the national anthem, Wendy, if we want to talk about the flag, Wendy, let's have a real conversation, a full conversation, and not some petty conversation saying that Jay-Z and Beyonce should leave. No, Wendy, I dare say what Harry Belafonte said when I interviewed him. I asked Harry the question, Harry, you love, you can, you love the South of France. And he said, this is why, he said, I could easily move to the South of France. I can easily go somewhere else. I could easily travel around the world. But he said, I'm staying here to make America be the country she said it was on paper. And what you need to understand, Wendy, is that I don't care what Jay-Z said in response to this and trying to clean it up. What you need to understand, Wendy, is that black people will never be questioned by white people 
or people like you when it comes to patriotism? Because there have been no greater patriots in this country than black people. There have been no greater patriots than people who have loved a nation that did not love them. And if it means sitting or kneeling, windy, damn it, that's what we will do. Because we are going to exercise the freedoms of the First Amendment. Because the black people have actually made the country accept people for really who they are. Do you understand, Wendy, that two days ago was the 150th anniversary of the 15th Amendment, which gave black men the right to vote? Yet here, Wendy, we are in 2020, 150 years later, and black people are still dealing with voter ID, still dealing with voter suppression. Please share with me, Wendy, when are you going to have these conversations on your hot topics? When are you going to have real conversations about what black folks are dealing with all across this country? Not some silly ass entertainment stories, Wendy. But I'm talking about stuff of substance. I'm talking about things that actually matter. And so you want to chastise Jay-Z. And let me also do a fact check, Wendy, because I got to clearly fact check you like I had to do Angela. Wendy, Jay-Z is not an NFL owner. Jay-Z don't own a whole team. He don't own half of a team. He don't own a quarter of a team. He don't own 10%, 5%, 1%, 0.1% 1 .1 of a team. So please, if you're going to go on television chastising somebody, please use Google first. Now is not the time, Wendy, for black people with platforms to use them who are flat out wrong. And you are wrong. And so maybe, Wendy, you should pick the phone up and call folk like me before you open your mouth. Now, see, I told you this last time, and you had me on the show, and let's just be real honest, y'all had me on the show, because you and your then husband called me because y'all lost $2 million in sponsorship and y'all needed to clean that thing and stop the dam before more money walked out of the door if we really want to spill some tea. Let's be real. And remember, Wendy, I got receipts because when I spoke in Florida, I met your daddy. And your daddy thanked me for setting you straight about your comments about HBCUs and the NAACP, Wendy. See, I got receipts, Wendy. So if you want to have a discussion, Wendy, on your show about black people and protest and the national anthem, you got my number. But please use your platforms to properly educate folks and not live in a fall in a fog of ignorance. Wendy. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, so a lot of y'all always asking me about terms, some of the pocket squares that I wear. Now, I don't know, Robert don't have one on. Now, I don't particularly like the white pocket squares. I don't like even the silk ones. And so I was reading GQ magazine a number of years ago, and I saw uh, this guy who had this, this pocket square here, and it looks like a flower. Uh, this is called a shibori pocket square. This is how the Japanese manipulate the fabric to create this sort of flower effect. So I'm going to take it out and then place it in my hand so you see what it looks like. And I said, man, this is pretty cool. And so I tracked down, the. it took me a year to find a company that did it. Uh, and so uh, they make these about 47 different colors. And so I love them because, again, as men, we don't have many accessories to wear, so we don't have many options. Uh, and so this is really a pretty cool uh, pocket square. Now, what I love about this here is you saw uh, when it's uh, in, in the pocket, you know, it gives you that flower effect like that. But if I wanted to also, unlike other, because if I flip it and turn it over, it actually gives me a different type of texture. And so therefore it gives me a different look. 
So there you go. So uh, if you actually want to uh, get one of these Shibori pocket squares, we have them in 47 different colors. All you got to do is go to rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All right, so first of all, that graphic is way too small. So uh, tomorrow we're going to run it right down here all across the screen. So it's rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All you got to do is go to my website uh, and you can actually uh, get this. Now, for those of you who are members of our Bring the Funk fan club, there's a discount for you to get our pocket squares. That's why you also got to be a part of our Bring the Funk fan club. Uh, and so that's what we want you to do. And so it's pretty cool. So if you want to jazz your look up, you can do that. In addition, uh, y'all see me with some of the feather pocket squares. My sister who's a designer. She actually makes these. They're all custom made. So when you also go to the website, Site, you can also order one of the customized uh, feather pocket squares uh, right there at rollingsmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. So please do so. And of course, uh, it goes to support the show. And again, if you're a Brenda Funk fan club member, you get a discount. This is why you should join the fan club. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.